Hi, thanks for the nice introduction and good morning everyone. It's so cool to be here. Um, it's my first international conference and I'm really happy to meet you all and be here in Budapest. So, as she said, my name is Julia and we're going to talk about CSS games and drawings, if they're just fun or if they are useful for something. So, first of all, I want to talk a little about me. So, I know my name may sound Italian, but I'm actually from Brazil. And, well, I'm in a relationship with CSS since 2014. And, well, this is a bad pun, but I have to say it was love at the first website. And, well, uh, right now I'm a freelancer UI developer at Toptal, which is cool because I can work a lot with CSS, which makes me happy. And, as she said, I'm a cat hugger. I have two cats, and it's just great to write CSS while my cat is seated behind, beside me. It, that's great. And I'm Teranaka Strawberry's number one fan, which are actually, they are from Japan, but I'm not talking about the ones from Japan. They are actually cultivated in a small town near my hometown. And these strawberries are awesome because they are just the perfect mixture of sour and sweet. And at last, I'm Dino Kiki's best friend. He's my dinosaur. And don't worry, I'm going to talk about him in a couple of slides. So just hanging there about this information. OK, enough about me. And now I want to know about you. So I have a question for you. Please raise your hand if you ever code just for fun. If you did a project, great, a lot of people did. I I'm really happy about it. It's OK if you didn't, because sometimes we just have a lot of work. We have a lot when we get home. It's OK if you don't have time for it or if you didn't right now. Maybe we can change that by the end of this talk. Who knows? And also, I want to know from you if you did include this fun project in your portfolio. Please raise your hand if you did. OK. Good. Not a lot of people, but that's good. So this talk is all about talking about how our fun projects can impact not only in our learning, but also including in our portfolio and what these things can do for our career, if they have an impact or if they're just a fun project we did and maybe we like to share with our friends. Um, well, as I told you, I have this dinosaur. It's actually a website. It's called dinokiki.com. You can access it later, but I have to say it's a bit loud, so just don't access it in a public place. Maybe it's a little loud. And well, I created this in 2014, and back then I was an exchange student at United States, and I really needed an internship. I was just starting with front-end development, and I wanted to know jQuery because it was the hype back then, and I didn't know a lot. I didn't learn that in the university. So I decided to create a project so I could include in my portfolio and maybe get an internship. And it was a bit crazy idea because when you click over him, he just speaks like the syllable Kiki in different voices. So it's random. Every time you click over him, it's a different Kiki. And also the syllables will start popping up on the screen. And it was inspired by two things, which are kind of useless. First is this website called Please Pet Dog. You just click over the dog and start petting him, and random things like he's happy you're petting him start showing up on the screen. And also this Vine. I know Vine is dead. I'm really sad about it, because I really loved Vine. About this man walking in the street and screaming Kiki and saying he was a dinosaur. It's Mama Dinosaur Finds Its Baby. I like that fine, so I put together both of the things and created that website. And, well, it's actually listed on the useless website, so we can say it's useless when we think about a business perspective, but it's not useless for me. I use it first to learn jQuery, but I'm still using it. For example, last year I started working with Vue.js, so I decided to change it to Vue.js and Node.js instead of jQuery and PHP, which were a, bit, a little bit outdated. And even today, I have it on my portfolio. And even the job I'm currently in, people always look at it and say, oh, cool, you have the dinosaur. I, I like that when I, I'm not the company. And it's nice. Is that it's a way that I created to learn new things or to practice the things that I'm working on. And this talk is about these things. And I just wanted to share with you this example. But now, let's dive in this, into the CSS. Yeah, I just talked about the dinosaur, but I promise it had a point. OK. So it's about CSS drawings and games. So first of all, I just want to show a bit of what, is, what are CSS drawings? What is a CSS game? So I opened it here. 
a few code pens. This one was not made by me, it was made by this person called Marcin Doshka, I guess. It's Peppa Pig. Okay, don't you think this person had fun while creating this? I mean, I, d I don't know why this person created it. Maybe she li he or he or they like liked it, or maybe their children liked it. I'm not sure. Even though it's Peppa Pig, it's a pretty simple drawing. Probably it wasn't that easy to create this with C CSS, especially when we consider it has borders and other things. And well, this one is one I created about the solar system. It's a bit animated. And these drawings are the base for the presentation I'm doing right now. So every drawing on the presentation is actually a, screen so a screenshot of something I draw with CSS. And now about games, I found this pretty cool game. It was made by this person called Jerry Lowe. It's in CodePen, and it's made with only CSS. And you have to stack the yellow squares over each other. So for example, here, okay, it's working. And then you lose if you do this. And then you can play it again. So it's an interesting game. It's nice, and it's made only with CSS. This person probably had to learn new things or practice things. He already know. And last, there is this drawing. I mean, probably you saw it on the internet. This is just awesome. This, I mean, it's really hard to create something like this with any kind of thing, like even with paper or with paint. And we call it, it's just awesome. So I just want to remember you all that CSS can also be art. So I made this emoji slides just to to inspire how I felt when I saw this. And well, now hopefully you remember what CSS drawings and games are, or if you didn't know. And when I saw of this, when I did some, I was wondering every, everything I learned and how I liked these things. And they were helping me to exercise part of this CSS and HTML things. And I was wondering if other people felt like it. So I decided to conduct a survey with Brazilian developers because the server was in Portuguese. And I created a questionnaire and shared on Twitter, Facebook, and other social networks, asking about how people felt about these things. So the first question, well, there were six participants, 60. And the first question was if they ever heard about CSS drawings or games. And I'm going to make you guys, you folks, raise your hand again a few times. So I want to know from you, before the stop, have you ever heard about both of these topics or any of these topics? Cool, I was expecting a lot of people because we're in at CSSConf, and that's great. And I was expecting also a lot of people to say they did on my survey, and that happened. I think 77%, it's a good number. But then I decided to ask if these developers created a CSS drawing. I want to know from you, did you ever create a CSS drawing? Yeah, we got a similar result, and most of the people didn't. Um, then I decided to ask about games. I mean, I was expecting a very low number because I think CSS games are something that are not er as popular. And I promise, this is the last time. Did you ever <laughs> develop a game with only HTML and CSS? Anyone? Cool, cool, we have people who did it. And well, in my survey, we got like one person. I was a bit sad, but most of all, it made me think about why. Why people know what it is, maybe they really love CSS, but it's not a way they usually experiment with CSS. Maybe they do other kinds of experiments. But I, ask it, I also asked these participants if they learned something new from this experience. And they did learn. But I think this is one of the things that make people not want to draw or play or develop a game with CSS. It's something that is fun. But maybe th this pr the, the people think it's not something good for their career, which I completely disagree. Because when we say something is useless, we're saying that it's useless in a business perspective or something we do in our everyday lives. But it can be useless. It, it cannot, it's not useless for us or for other people who are working with this technology. And okay, going back to the part where I just said, it, the participants said it helped them to learn something by creating the CSS games or drawings. And specifically, I asked it a few topics. All of them said it helped to practice creativity because 
sometimes you just don't create a drama from scratch, but you can still work on your creativity while, while you are developing it. And also other technical topics such as CSS positioning, HTML tags, CSS selectors, pseudo elements, and pseudo and classes in CSS. And I was thinking like, I told you so. I, I'm glad more people also learned something. It was not only me. They, the people who created these things, they actually learned something nice. But there is this other code, which I think it's something that people say, especially when I talk about drawings, a lot of people say, well, not a lot of people, but someone said, well, you need to be super creative about it. I, I cannot just make a drawing. I, I don't have an idea for it. Well, it's true. If you want to create something new, you need to have some creativity. But it doesn't mean that every time you create a drawing or a game, you need to use your own idea like 100%. You can create it using things that already exist. So, for example, my tip is if you don't have an idea, but you want to practice CSS by creating a drawing, you can recreate something that already exists. I did this. For example, one of my first drawings was this black cat from Sailor Moon called Luna. And I want to draw her. I don't know why. I really liked Sailor Moon when I was younger. And I searched on Google, and I decided to draw probably her head with the moon over it. And I created this on code pen. It's actually animator, her ears move. And I was pretty happy with the result. Because, well, I learned those things, especially how to create like her cheeks and everything else, the moon. So I could practice things that I was that I, I'm going to use on my job. And well, after this, okay, I gave you a tip how to start, but maybe people just say, Creating a drawing is not like creating a website. I don't know how I can start. I mean, how do you start a thing like that? So I created a cycle that works for me. It's not a rule. You can use it if you want. If you already have yours, that's great. It would be cool to talk about it. Please let, let's know other ways to create a drawing. And the first step is you get the image and you break it into geometric forms. I'm not a very good drawing on paper. But if I create something that's on my head, I draw it very badly on paper, and then I try to break it into geometric forms. Because why break it into geometric forms? Because it's easier to create something in CSS from the geometric forms. Because probably when we're developing a website, we already created like a circle or a square or even a triangle. So it's better to break these things. Step number two is to use HTML to represent pieces of the drawing. For example, you have a drawing that has a head. You can, call, you can have a div with a class called head. And step number three, which is the one that takes most of the time, is to style each piece of the HTML. So this cycle works for me, but as I said, it's not a rule, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about each one of these steps and how we can create this in a more practical way. So I am going to choose Dino Kiki as an example. This is Tenokiki's head, which I made only with CSS. So first, we break it into geometric forms. So here it is. This head is made by this element. Some of them are repeated. So we have a kind of oval and a rectangle, and that yellow thing with like a half circle, the eye. That's his mouth and his teeth. For this, I'm going to use his body or his head as an example. So. I created this div called body, and well, there will be another one for the eye, another one for the mouth, and so on. Then I'm going to style using CSS. So I broke it into two geometric forms. The first one is the body, which is a green oval with the border radius to make it look like this. And then there's another step, which is his neck, which I used the pseudo element after, which is a, just a rectangle. And well, when we put both of them together, they look like Dino Kiki's neck or head. And you can do that with different things. If it's a more complex drawing, you're probably going to have to do it over and over again. And you're probably going to have to worry about pixels and how to uh, combine things. So differently from a website, which you can use Flexbox or Grid, on this case, when it's like a drawing from an animal or a person, 
I tend to use like left and top positions, more absolute positions, because the same way as if we were drawing on the paper, we would think, oh, this looks better like right here. So the same thing happens with CSS. It's just one pixel left or one pixel right can change the drawing. So that's why I use posi absolute positioning. OK, I talk about drawings. You may have an idea how to create a drawing. Hopefully, you think about, I'm going to make a drawing. Let's think about what I'm going to draw. But I didn't talk about CSS games. I just showed one. So now is the time to talk about CSS games. I'm, I'm excited. OK, so I'm going to present to you a Space Team memory game. This game was made with no images, no JavaScript, no CSS preprocessors, everything are plain and cool CSS. And it's actually responsive. OK, can we play that? Or that probably sounds a bit boring, but I don't think it's boring. So let's play it. OK. So here's the game. Uh, the memory game, it's a set of cards that we have to find the similar cards. Uh, hopefully, you played that when you were a child. But if you didn't, for example, we have like animals, and we have to find the two monkeys or the two giraffes, and then we set these cards aside. This one is made with planets and on the, the solar system. So the first thing I do is I click on the card, and it shows the planet. Then I have to find another similar one. Well, if they are not similar, nothing happens. And the same way I would play with paper, that I have to turn the cards back and front, I would turn them back again. But let's figure, let's think I found a similar one. OK, I know it's this one. So when we find similar ones, it has this small animation saying, hey, you found me. And then I change the background. And well, then you can keep playing. It is responsive. So for example, if I change for like a smaller screen, here it is. I use a CSS grid to make another order of the cards. So it's not random, because I don't have a random function in CSS at this time. But you can change, I think, three different screen widgets, and then the change the, the order of the cards. So you can play it again. It won't be boring. For example, here is not Earth. It's actually Venus. And if you open it, it's in another position. Okay. So now I'm going to cheat a little bit to show you what happens when we play all of the game and we win. Please don't tell anyone that I, I was doing this. OK. So I'm going to just select all of the cards. Oh, OK. And done. I won. And then Arts gets happy and says, yay, you won. And then you can refresh the page and play it again if you want it. So this was made only with CSS. The drawings are the one from the solar system drawing I showed you earlier. And well, well, let's talk about how this game was built in a more technical way. OK, great. I think the main question I had when I wanted to do this game is, how could we create a click-based action without a JavaScript event? Because usually when we think about clicking things and interacting with things, we always think about clicking with JavaScript. Depending if you're using vanilla JavaScript or a framework, it changes, but it's always a kind of on-click event. The secret, at least for me on this case, it was to combine label and checkbox. Because if we think about the checkbox, well, it changes it, its appearance when we click over it. So if you click on the label, it's checked. If you unclick, if you click again, it's unchecked. So this allows us to have a label and to change the state of this checkbox. And this is the, mo the bigger in engine of this game. So for example, each card, both parts of the stars and the planet, are labels. And then the checkbox, it's not visible, actually. So that's why there is a blank screen. So it's hidden. You don't see the checkbox. But there's actually, actually a checkbox for each one of the cards. The cards are a label for a hidden checkbox. And here's a, a, an example of the code. So we have an input. This example is for the planet Mars. And then we have the label, which have two sections. The first one I call card front, which is the place that the stars go. This, each of one of the stars is a C, uh, HTML div. It's just like a white point, like two pixels, I think, with some opacity reduced. And then there is the card back, which is just a planet and the text of the planet. 
So both of them are on the label, and I just changed their visibility according to the checkboxes state. So let's think a little bit more about the game logic. And this is something I just realized when I, when I was creating the game, and I think it's really cool. So let me present that to you. I really like cycles, so this is the last one from the presentation. But the first thing that happens when we start playing with the card is that you click over the card. When you click on it, the, change bo the check box will change its state. So if it was not checked, it gets checked, and vice versa. And then it will change the visible part on the card. But let's think a little bit more about the step number two, about the checkbox. So there are different states. There are different phases, actually. There's the first one, when, the, when you start playing the card and all the cards are with the stars showing. And then you can click over it, and it's going to show the planet. And also there's the third one, which is when you click all of the cards and you won the game. So the case number one is when the checkbox becomes checked. Uh, this is the cool thing. I mean, if you look at the code and you think how to create a game, you ended up trying to use try to use conditionals such as if else, but there is no such thing in the CSS. So, how do we create a similar behavior if we don't have an if in CSS? Because we want to click on the card, and if the stars are visible, we're gonna hide the stars and show the Earth or on the other planet. So here is the code I use it to simulate this if, which is, I'm gonna uh, when the checkbox Earth is checked, then I'm gonna show the part of the card which is called card front. So I'm hiding this. Sorry, I'm gonna hide this part, the card front, which are the stars. And then, in the same case, which means if the checkbox Earth is checked, I'm gonna show the card back part, which are the planets, which is Earth. And then there's the case number two, which is the opposite. It's actually going back to its initial state, which is else. If the Earth is visible or the stars are not visible, I'm going to hide Earth and display the stars, which is just going back to the original state, which is not showing the card back, which is Earth, and then displaying the card fronts, which are the stars. And the case number three, which is when you won the game, you select all of the cards, you did right, you, you play the memory game, and then both of the planets, the similar planets, are visible. In this case, Earth number one is visible and Earth number two is visible. Then I'm just going to make the background darker and include a small animation. And here it is. So I think this is cool because when I look about, I, I'm going to explain this, what I can Simulate is like, well, if Earth is checked and Earth number two is checked, then I'm going to change the background color of the card back. So I think when we are using CSS on our jobs, creating website, business applications, sometimes we don't stop and look at the selectors like this. We just keep doing our CSS, and we have so many things to worry. Is the code clean? Am I using new technologies? And it's pretty cool to experiment and look at the CSS in another way. I think it's good, and you're probably going to use that on work later. Maybe there is one way that you're going to need to use the selectors or create something similar to an if, and maybe you just haven't thought a lot about it yet. You just didn't give you time to do that. And well, I created this game initially because I wanted to use CSS Grid, and I was working a lot with SAS, but I really wanted to use CSS custom properties. So there were a, few, a list of few things that I wanted to learn by creating this game. But after I created it and I started looking at the code, OK, we have a notification. <laughs> and well, I realized I learned more things than I was expecting. So here is okay. here's a list. So as I told you, CSS Grid, because that was the main point of creating this game, and CSS custom properties. But I ended up learning more about the limitations of the input checkbox and the HTML tags. It's something that we use. Maybe you already know, but it's cool to practice and to explore it to its limits. It's nice to see what we can do with the checkbox, because when we are using it on, on our applications, maybe we don't, don't see how important it is or how cool it is. 
uh, now I look at the checkbox in another way, and it's cool. And also animations and transitions with CSS. I think animations and transitions is something that is really cool to learn with drawings because you can animate them and you can do crazy things with them. And it's really important to use transitions on your website. But you know, if you include too much, it's not good. But if you're not included, it's also not that cool. So it's a really nice way to try. And probably I learned more. I mean, I'm talking with you, so maybe I learn also how to talk with people, with a lot, lots of people, I don't know. So it was a really cool experience. Uh, I created other games after that, and probably I'm going to still create more in the future. But that's not all. Uh, hopefully, you are motivated to create a drawing or a game. I don't know. I know we still have two more days of conference, and maybe we have a lot of work next week because we were in the conference. But when you have some time, if you're interested, it would be really cool if you tried to make one. And make a list of the things you want to learn and the things you learned. It's really nice to see your progress. And it's a really cool way to learn more things, because there are so many ways to learn, right? I mean, online courses, we can take classes, we can talk to people. And this is just another way that you could have fun with. If you were tired of other methods of learning, try any one. Try to experiment something. Try to create something that you think it's cool. It doesn't need to be super, use, super useful for business application. But it can be your experiment, your thing. And that's OK. So if you ended up creating drawing, that would be so cool. And if you do, Please share it on your session networks and let me know. Let CSF Comp Budapest know because it w that would be really cool. And here are the links for the game. So if you want to play the game, it's on CodePen. You can find me on CodePen, but that's also this link, so maybe it's easier to find. And the presentation is already live on this link. So I also include the links for the other drawings. It's everything on the last slide. So if you're interested in checking the games and the drawings out, please. Check it on the URL. And well, is there still taking pictures? OK. I just want to say thank you for all of you to being here and to seeing this. Uh, I really hope that I made you look at the drawings and the games in a different way. I mean, they can be useful for your career. They are a method of learning. So please, just try it if you have some time. I think it's worth it. So thank you. And Kozano, I don't know. If and obrigado. And this is my Twitter username. If you want to talk about games or if you want to brainstorm ideas for games on Twitter or here, I'm available. And thank you so much. That was amazing.